next thing which we saw is let's see a few properties of the variance of a random variable. Recall when we wanted to look at properties of expectation, we wanted, we saw what is expectation of a constant times random variable and what was expectation of a constant plus a random variable. That is what would happen to the expectation if I multiply my random variable with a constant and if I add a constant to my random variable. If you recall these were the properties when I looked at the expected value of a random variable. Now, let us continue with the same exercise for variance of a random variable. So, the question is suppose I have x as a random variable and I am multiplying x with a constant, I want to know what is variance of x. Recall expectation of a constant is c into expectation of x, let expectation of x be mu, so this is c times mu. So, from my first principles, I know variance of x is expectation of c x minus expectation of c times x is c mu whole square, which is nothing but expectation of c into x minus mu whole square, which is going to be c square expectation of x minus mu square, which is going to be c square into variance of x. So, we can choose and we can see that if x is a random variable and c is a constant, then variance of c times or variance of a constant multiple of x is c square variance of x. Now, what would happen to variance of x adding a constant to x? Again, recall expectation of x plus constant is mu plus c, which is same as expectation of x plus a constant. So, variance of x plus c is going to be expectation of x plus c minus x plus t, which is mu plus c, the whole square. So, this is going to be expectation of x plus c minus mu minus c whole square these two cancel out which is expectation of x minus mu whole square which we know is variance of x. So, variance of a constant times a random variable is c square times variance of x whereas variance of x plus a constant is the same as variance of x. Again, why is this? Remember, if I add a constant two variables. So, if this is the variability and I add a constant, the variance does not change. This is something which if I am adding 1, then the variance does not change. The means changes, but the variance does not change if I add a constant because it is just going to be a shift in my distribution. So, I can generalize this result as a corollary which was very similar to expectation of a x plus b is a times expectation of x plus b, I get variance of a x plus b is a square variance of x. The proof for this is also very simple. Variance of a x plus b is nothing but variance expectation of a x plus b minus a mu minus b, which is the expectation of a x plus b, b and minus b cancel out. So, I get an expectation of a into x minus mu whole square, which is a square expectation of x minus mu whole square, which is a square variance of x and that is what I have here. Hence, I know that if a and b are constants, x variance of a x plus b is a square variance of x. These are very important properties of variance and let us apply this to understand how to get the variance of sum of random variables. Again, recall when I had random variables x and y, expectation of x plus y was the sum of expectation. That is, expectation of sum 
was sum of expectations. So, the question we are asking is variance of sum will it be equal to the sum of variances that is the question we are asking. Now, let us look at the following case. Let x be equal to x and y be also equal to x then I know variance of x plus y is nothing but variance of x plus x. Let me tell you I am going to write variance of x and variance of x. They mean the same. This is just a shorthand notation to represent variance of x. So, v of x and v a r of x and v of y and v a r of y represent the same quantity which is variance of a random variable. So, variance of x plus y equal to variance of x plus x. This is variance of 2x. We already know variance of a constant times x is c square variance of x. Hence, variance of 2 times x is going to be 4 times variance of x. Now, if I, I wanted to know whether variance of x plus y is variance of x plus variance of y. So, if I am going to look at the right hand side, I get variance of x plus variance of x which is 2 times variance of x. I can see that 4 times variance of x is not equal to variance of x plus variance of x. So, in general, we ask whether variance of x plus y would be equal to variance of x plus variance of y. The answer is no. It need not be equal and we illustrated it with an example showing that variance of x plus x is not equal to variance of x plus variance of x. So, the natural question is, is this always true? Is this always true? That is given two random variables, variance of x plus y. Is it always not equal to variance of x plus variance of y? Again, the answer is no. So, we introduce the notion of independent random variables. What do we mean by random variables that are independent? I say that two random variables x and y are independent if knowing the value of one of them does not change the probability of the other. Let us look at an example. Again, roll a die twice. I know this is my sample space. Now, let x be the random variable which is the outcome of the first dice and let y be the outcome of the second dice. I know x takes the value 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. y also takes the value 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, the x, the probability of y taking the value 1 is independent of what was the outcome of x. So, x and y are independent because I, if given that x has taken some, that is given the outcome of the first dice does not impact the outcome of the second where y is defined as the outcome of the second dice. Hence, x and y are independent dependent random variables. Now, why does this become important to us? Now, if I have x and y as independent random variables, then I can show that variance of x plus y is equal to variance of x plus variance of y. In other words, variance of x plus y need not always be equal to the sum of variances. However, if x and y are independent random variables, then the variance of the sum is the sum of the variances. Now, we are going to look at application of this result. Again, let us look at rolling a dice twice. 
again x is the outcome of the first dice and y is the outcome of the second toss or first fair dice and second fair die. Now, I know that expectation of x equal to expectation of y equal to 3.5 and we also verified expectation of x plus y is expectation of x plus expectation of y which is equal to 7 and we knew that 7 is the expectation when I am rolling a dice twice you recall that the expectation of the sum of dice was equal to 7. We already computed the variance of x in a roll of a single die. Now, you recall again x is a uniform distribution. So, you can see that this was 35 by 35 by 12. Variance of y is also going to be 35 by 12. Hence, variance of x plus y equal to 70 by 12 and you can verify that variance of x plus y is variance of x plus variance of y which is almost equal to 5.83 which you can check is 70 by 12. So, you can verify that this is what we got applying the computational formula. This is what we got by applying the fact that variance of x plus y equal to variance of x plus variance of y when x and y are independent random variables. Now, I can extend this property that variance of sum of two independent random variable is sum of the variances to many independent variable. In particular, if I have x1, x2, xk which are k independent random variable, the variance of the sum of these k independent random variables is the sum of the variances of the k independent random variable. Variance of sum is sum of variance. I can extend this not only to 2 but to k variables. So, variance of sum is sum of variances. Now, how do I apply this formula? Again, recall tossing a coin 3 times is same as noting down the outcomes of a fair toss three times. That is, I am repeating an experiment three times. So, I have a first toss, I have a second toss, I have a third toss. Let x1 be my outcome of the first toss, x2 be the outcome of the second toss, x3 is the outcome of the third toss. I know x1 takes the value 0 or 1 which represents tail or head x2 represents tail or head again 0 or 1, x3 tail or head 0 or 1. Since it is a fair coin, it takes the value half, 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 half and half, half. These are the probabilities with xi takes the value i. We also know expectation of x1 equal to half, expectation of x2 is equal to half, expectation of x3 is equal to half, expectation of x1 plus x2 plus x3, x1, x2, x3 are the outcomes of my first toss, second toss and third toss. I know they are independent of each other. Expectation of x1 plus x2 plus x3 equal to half plus half plus half which is 3 by 2 and this is precisely the expectation of a random variable where I am counting the number of heads, we have checked this also which is going to be 3 by 2. Now, let us look at the variance of x1. If x1 takes the value 0 and 1, I know x1 square also takes the value 0 and 1 with probability 0 and half. Recall this is a Bernoulli random variable. We know the variance of a Bernoulli random variable is p into 1 minus p. p in this case is half. So, the variance of x1 is 1 by 4. 
Similarly, variance of x2 is also 1 by 4 and variance of x3 is also 1 by 4. Because x1, x2, x3 are all Bernoulli random variables with parameter p equal to half. They are independent also. So, I can apply my property that the variance of a sum is sum of variances which we have just seen. So, variance of x1 plus x2 plus x3 would be variance of x1 plus variance of x2 plus variance of x3 which is going to be 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 which is 3 by 4 and you can see that that matches with the variance which we computed using the computational formula which is 0.75 and 3 by 4 is the same. This is what we have already seen. Okay. So, in summary, what we have seen so far is the main properties of the variance, namely variance of a constant is c square, variance of x, variance adding a constant is variance of x, which can be generalized to ax plus b is a square, variance of x. And variance of summation i going from 1 to k x i where x1, x2, x i are independent random variables is the sum of the variances. So, these are the two important properties we have saw, seen and we computed the earlier distributions applying these properties.